Hi, I'm Kate Piat Eckert, Executive Director of Steep Theatre Company. We're right next to the Berwyn Red Line stop. In February, I had never heard of Zoom. There's a lot I miss about February, and not being on Zoom every day is definitely one of them. Fortunately, I have an amazing community of theater artists who give me some great tips and tricks that I'm happy to share with you. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about background. There are some super cool digital backgrounds out there. Go for it. Have a great time. Uh, if you're looking for something a little more real life, I like something neutral. So when I'm lazy or have just a quick Zoom conference, I'll sit at my desk and you can see the entire apartment behind me. There's a lot going on back there. There are piles of laundry. There are bookshelves. There's a lot. There's also a ceiling fan that's right above my head that makes it look like I have some sort of 1950s spinning freshman in college beanie hat on. So when I want to look a little more professional, I'll go with this neutral background. The angle of my computer is also really important. So I set my computer a little bit higher than would normally be natural. The base of my laptop is about even with my shoulders, and that makes the camera angle come from just above my line of sight, which really helps. If I put my computer where I would normally hold it for typing, not only can you see straight up my nose, but it gives my face a really strange perspective. So setting your computer on a few books or some way to get it above your face really help to mitigate that. Lighting is also a really key factor. So we think about light in two parameters, direction and color. And what we want is two different light sources, more if we can get them, but two is pretty good for an apartment. Uh, and we want them coming from different directions and in different colors. So we think about direction, our laptops are actually really bright and they're shining straight at us. So if that's the only light source we have, we're gonna look really flat. Now top light seems like it should be good. Top light is light that comes from above and shines down on you. I mean, the sun is up there and we look great when we're outside, but top light indoors tends to highlight the, the hollows in our faces. So it'll give us big shadows under our eyes, a shadow under your nose. It's not super cute. Um, so we want some light coming from the side. Uh, I'll take the lamp off my desk and put it on the windowsill if it's nighttime um, so I can get some side light. We also talk about color temperature. Uh, if you think about the street lights, some of them are yellow and some of them are blue. I won't get into the physics of it, but that's what I mean by color temperature. So if we can vary that and have lights of different colors, it'll help us look a lot more natural on camera. So the light coming from your computer again, it's bright, it's coming from the front and it's blue. So adding something that looks a little bit more yellow will really help balance that out and give you a more natural skin tone. So it can be kind of uncomfortable to have a bunch of lamps pointed at you while you're giving an hour and a half Zoom presentation. If you have the back of a poster or an old t-shirt or something white that you can shine the light at it'll, and then reflect back on your face. So getting that reflected light will really help uh, mitigate the shining straight in your eyes problem. I, for one, and you may too, have glasses, which means that if I shine the light straight at my face, I get a really cool reflection right where my eyeball should be. So we try to avoid that by having some reflected surface. I have a really sweet Edgewater Andersonville Theater District banner that I was planning on putting up when I went into quarantine, and I'm using the back of it as a sort of uh, reflective surface. So it's a little bit shiny and it's big and white and helps me get some light coming at me that's not straight on and doesn't give me quite so many reflections in my glasses. Now, voice is also huge. Uh, how we use our mouths to make words seems like we're all pretty good at this, and we are. We're great at talking in person, but there are a few tips that I've learned for public speaking that are also really helpful in making sure that we're understood on Zoom and on video, where audio quality can really vary. One is helping to prevent uh, too many echoes. You, you, you think of the sound when someone's making a phone call inside a bathroom and it's all sort of echoey and sounds like you're inside a tin can. What can help with that is surrounding yourself in, with what we call soft goods. So for example, I hold a pillow in my lap and there's a curtain right over here and having fabric around me helps to absorb sound waves that keep things more focused into the quality of whatever microphone my computer happens to have. Um, we'll, we think about um, podcasters or folks recording books on tape at home. They'll often sit in a small space but fill that space with soft goods so that there aren't too many echoes. The other thing that we want to talk about is how we shape our mouths. So 
yes, we can definitely talk without moving our mouths too much, and in person you might be able to be understood, but if you really open your mouth, you have this huge resonating chamber that can not only help you get better volume, but help you get better quality of sound, the way a large speaker system might get you better sound than you know the little speaker inside your phone. Um, and the more you open and use and move your lips and your teeth and your tongue, the better diction and clarity you have. And as sound degrades as it makes its way through the computer sphere, you want to give it every help it can to be able to be easily understood. So don't be afraid to really open your mouth and talk to people. If you're talking to someone who's on the other side of the room, you make sure that they can hear you. And it's really easy to forget when you're talking to your computer, which is right in front of you, that there's another human being on the other side of that computer. So whenever possible, forget about the computer screen and talk to the human being. Uh, pretend the human being's on the other side of your computer and you have to get your message all the way over there. So speak clearly and openly and as though there's a real person listening. And it really helps. Um, I, for one, if I don't have someone to talk to, like while making this recorded message, instead of just talking to the reflection of myself in the computer screen, I talk to this stuffed bee. And this stuffed bee not only keeps me from being self-conscious by staring at myself, it also gives me somebody to talk to, and he's a great listener. So those are my tips. I hope that you find them helpful, and happy Zooming!